Well, g'day, audiophiles. Welcome. Welcome back to the Sirens of Audio. It's great to have your company again. This time we're going to be having a look back at the fourth Doctor, Tom Baker, and having a bit of a focus on some of his episodes. The big finish news at the moment with Tom Baker is the fact that they have Rush released a brand new audio adventure featuring him as the fourth Doctor. It is called Shadow of the Sun by Robert Valentine. It's coming out on the 12th of May, just a few days after this very podcast is published and uh, stars Louise Jameson as well um, and John Leeson reprising their roles as Leela and K-9. Any Call the Midwife fans out there? Fenella Woolgar is featured in this audio as well. So very curious to hear how this goes. Um, the, the trailer sounds really good, so why don't we just have a listen to that right now? First officer, it's possible we have a stowaway situation. And if anyone on board knows what's happened to Professor Nicely, I think I know who to ask first. From Big Finish Productions, Doctor Who, The Fourth Doctor Adventures, Shadow of the Sun. This is the gold star line. The purpose is glamour, recreation, and living it up like it's 24.99. Is it me or is it getting warm down here? You are correct, Miss Crisp. The temperature has risen by 3.8 degrees centigrade since we arrived. In Heliotopia's warm embrace, we shall be set free. In Heliotopia's warm embrace, we shall be set free. Lady Molina, have you seen my dog or a young woman dressed in animal hide? Uh, I don't like parties much either, Miss... Uh, Leela. Miss Leela. In just over an hour from now, we shall have proven the existence of Heliotopia once and for all. In one hour from now, the ship will be vaporised, don't you understand? No, no, Professor. Passengers aren't allowed on the lower decks unless there's an emergency. <laughs> No emergency at all, apart from the fact that we're all going to die. Big Finish. We love stories. Yes, this'll do. Perfectly safe. Is he correct, K-9? Yeah, why are you asking him? Insufficient data. K-9 is more cautious than you, Doctor. I'll have you know that my middle name is Prudence. Is it? So there you go. Shadow of the Sun's out in a few days' time. The very first Big Finish lockdown recording. So, to me, doesn't sound like it's too much different to the studio recordings. Uh, probably a little bit less chemistry between the actors, but I'm sure under the circumstances they're all doing a, 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 fantastic, a fantastic job. Tom Baker and Louise Jameson are still in fine form. And did I hear in that trailer... John Leeson playing a cameo role outside of his normal canine role as well. Mm, interesting. That was the first time I'd heard that trailer. So I thought I picked up on John Leeson there. It's always good to, to get him in some other roles as well. So who's been a Big Finish fan for a long, long time? Like me. Do you remember the days when Big Finish was putting out statements that Tom Baker was never going to be part of the Big Finish roster? Fans were writing in, can you please get Tom Baker? Can you please get Tom Baker? Big Finish kept insisting that they had asked, but Tom Baker said no, politely. But eventually, eventually the tables were turned and Tom Baker came into the Big Finish family. And from all accounts, he seems to be absolutely loving everything he does. I still remember that very first episode, Destination Nerva, was such an exciting CD to pick up in my hands and put into the CD player and hear New Doctor Who with Tom Baker's voice coming through the airwaves towards me. It was absolutely sensational to get that. His very first one, well, you wouldn't say it was the best example of a Tom Baker story, but being the first, it was always something special. And uh, the artwork on the cover was great. It's just obviously illustrating that they were coming straight out of Talons of Wang Chiang into that series. And of course, the first series being one with companion Leela. 
Um, I think the second series was also with Leela, and series three with Mary Tam as the first Romana. And yeah, so I just want to talk about a couple of the standouts for me personally. I thought it was really interesting because I wasn't ever sure how the dynamic between Tom Baker and Lala Ward would go with their past history. So I always thought it was very interesting. It's quite possible they recorded separately, but it looks as though in some of the publicity that they've got together to do photos and things like that. So perhaps their history has been left in the mists of time where it should be. But this first story, Wave of Destruction, the first story from Series 5 of The Fourth Doctor Adventures, featuring Lala Ward and Tom Baker, is a standout for me. I absolutely love the returning villain from the classic series, and it's really difficult to talk about because if I was to... Yeah, I don't want to spoil. I don't want to spoil it. So I'll talk a little bit more about this story in a moment, but... Have a listen to the to the trailer, and uh, we'll come back and, and talk about this one, Wave of Destruction, in just a second. Coming soon from Big Finish Productions, Doctor Who, The Fourth Doctor Adventures, Wave of Destruction. The best in British radio frantic. Anomaly, anomaly, modulating frequency wave cancellation signal detected. A modulated frequency wave cancellation signal. Modular frequency what? You think we should find whoever transmitted the signal? That would be very clever. Ah, oh, but Doctor, you are very clever. Radio frantic. Doctor, it's a laboratory. Yes, and a body. Who are you? And a man with a gun. Why were you here, Mr. Miller? Why were you visiting my father? He called me. Said they thought we were about to be invaded. And are you about to be invaded? <laughs> What on earth? Come on! Radio Frantic. Pirate radio is not really my thing. Pirates? This one's got quite a following. You know, if I were inventing a modulated frequency wave cancellation signal generator, I'd find that just a little bit distracting. I will not hesitate to shoot you. Why not just shoot us and be done with it? What an excellent suggestion. <laughs> Do you think the human race will submit to slavery? Have you learned nothing from your time here? Nothing from observing this planet? It is time to accept the inevitable. I never accept anything from strangers. Then I shall enjoy killing you as you watch this world burn. Radio Big Finish. We love stories. Now, if you uh, listen to that trailer and you look at the title of the story, Wave of Destruction, it's quite possible that you would put two and two together, and come up with the classic villain that's returning to this episode. However, I was completely surprised and very pleasantly surprised by the returning villain and the way it was done. As I've said previously on the podcast, as I've got older, I've become a lot less serious and my love of the fourth Doctor has kind of changed from his earlier years and I'm far, I, I seem to far more enjoy seasons 15 to 17. And with uh, the second Romana making her first appearance in this one, the story is done very much by, written by Justin Richards in the style of the uh, 17th season. And I love that, that kind of style, that humor that gets injected, the interplay between the characters and the, 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 quir- the overall quirkiness that, I mean, season 17 was the last time we were going to see that kind of style on the television. That was that was it. We weren't going to get that again. It was going to be a lot more serious again. So J&T must have been much more serious like me when he took over as uh, producer for season 18. But yeah, it, it's an absolute joy to listen to this one. Absolutely zero tension between Lala Ward and Tom Baker, as you would expect, but You know, you know, it was always there, even in the TV series, it was there. And uh, yeah, I I don't want to spoil the returning villain. So I could, I can wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly recommend Wave of Destruction. If you want to use that as a jumping on point to the fourth Doctor Adventures, if you haven't heard them before, really good one to start on. I like the time period too. uh, I I can't think of too many stories set in the, in the sixties. It's not a, it's not an era that is delved into too often because it's it's kind of historical now but it's 
a bit close to be viewed as uh, classic history, although it could be now. And I was also interested in, in the elements of pirate radio and uh, how that was weaved into the story as well. So lots of historical elements, even though it's not a historical story, uh, but set in that recent past that uh, is, is really interesting and fascinating to, to listen to. So kudos to Justin Richards and Nick Briggs, of course. It's well known that Nick Briggs always has first dibs as director on the Fourth Doctor Adventures. So for most of the Tom Baker stories, you can expect Nick Briggs to be behind the wheel directing those ones. So, uh, so yeah, I can wholeheartedly recommend Wave of Destruction. Grab yourself a copy now. Now, one of the tragedies of the Fourth Doctor Adventures is that we never got to have the fourth doctor and sarah jane together because of the untimely passing of elizabeth sladen that was uh, that was very sad but fortunately very fortunately we did get one series of stories with mary tam as the first romana and i need to correct my myself because previously i said the the mary tam series was series three but it was actually the second series of tom baker stories so yeah series two of the fourth doctor adventures in big finish is the other ones that feature mary tam and um there was one that stood out to me because i'm a huge fan huge huge fan of the period uh 19th century also guest starring trevor baxter and christopher benjamin reprising their roles as jago and lightfoot the Justice of Jalksa, written by John Dorney, is uh, a beautiful little episode. And John Dorney, one of the uh, prolific writers for Big Finish, you can always guarantee with John Dorney you're going to get something very, very cool. And uh, this is no exception. It's uh, wonderful to hear like all the different elements of this story come together. We've got Mary Tam as, as Romana. She's always wonderful, and it's just made me, listening to this again today, I wanted to go back and, and just watch season 16 again. Um, Jago and Lightfoot, amazing, amazing that we had so much big finish output from these guys, and we're going to be talking about the 13 series of box sets uh, of Jago and Lightfoot. We're going to be talking about that very soon on the podcast and delving into that a little deeper as well uh, with some guests. Tom Baker, as always, is on fire, and the period, the 19th century. All the ingredients are there for an absolutely sensational story, which is what it is. <laughs> so um, let's, have a, let's have a listen to the trailer for that one. This is, the, this is Doctor Who, the Justice of Jalxar. Coming soon from Big Finish Productions, The Fourth Doctor Adventures. Doctor Who, the Justice of Jalxar. Who do we know in this time period? Uh, you'd be surprised. Romana. Ah, uh, I think I know just the men. Look. Stab me, Vitals! That's impossible! Oh, as I live and breathe, Professor George Lightfoot and Henry Gordon Jago. I wondered if I could trouble you two for the merest jot of your time. I would have thought you'd have developed the internal combustion engine by now, rather than being reliant on livestock. Still, if you insist. <laughs> Whoever your killer is, I think he spent the last month taking the law into his own hands. I see. Like a murderous version of the pugilist. Yes, exactly. The who? What in the name of? Whereas I enjoy doing this. Coming for you, Mr. Stone. Pondus the pugilist! You this man for the rest of your life, do you? We've got a better chance of escape if we work together. What do you say? Oh, I... Oh. What in the name of hell is that? Where is Stone? Don't keep it away from me! No! No! Subscribers get more at bigfinish.com Yes, I'm, I'm feeling so full of uh, gratitude for the... For the fact that we that we did get that one season with Mary Tam before she sadly passed away, uh, it was great to hear them back together again, and uh, such a such a trip uh, down memory lane because that I guess that period of uh, of Doctor Who was one that uh, 
it was the one that I recorded the, the for the first time on on when I had a cassette video cassette recorder. So not when it was transmitted, but when it was repeated in Australia in the mid '80s. Uh, that happened to be the the period that uh, that I was recording and, and and listening to. So yeah, I've got a great a great affection for that particular period of the Fourth Doctor's history and a great little story too. Now another actor that took a long time to come into the Big Finish family, but is now working regularly with Big Finish, both in Doctor Who and probably more regularly in Dark Shadows, is Matthew Waterhouse. And it was such an impressive start. I remember that box set with the, the Fifth Doctor box set. Uh, what, what were the uh, stories called, I think, off the top of my head, because I'm not looking at the website or my collection? Iterations of I. That was the one that, that, that really got me. I think there was another story called Psychodrome as well included in that box set but Matthew Waterhouse came uh, and I think it took a couple of stories to get his characterization of Adric a little bit more to what it sounded like from the TV series but still he's done a fantastic job and it's only this year in January this year that the ninth season of Fourth Doctor Adventures was released and they have taken a trip back into eSpace. So more adventures set with the fourth Doctor, the second Romana and Adric trying to find their way out of eSpace. So all these stories are set between State of Decay and Warrior's Gate. And it's a really interesting concept. However, I, I couldn't help but think that this series may have some of the limitations that the eighth doctor adventures had when he was stuck in an alternate universe as well not an alternate universe a different universe the divergent one that had some issues that you probably won't get in the eSpace universe because uh because of the existence of time in eSpace whereas the divergent one um, they had to work around the fact that there was no concept of time so that's another story uh, that we can talk about another day. But this particular box set started with the first two stories. And it's the first time that the fourth Doctor has released a series of stories in four-part stories. They've normally been two-part stories that go for about an hour. This time, we're getting four-part stories that go for two hours each. And we're getting four of them over the season. So we're still getting the same number of episodes but we're getting longer stories so that we can really explore them and uh, see how that works for the fourth doctor because apart from some from some lost stories we haven't really had those longer stories that uh, many of the other doctors or most of the other doctors tend to have so this is an opportunity number 1 to explore eSpace but also an opportunity to have some longer stories featuring the fourth doctor and it's really interesting to be able to set these ones during the season 18 period. And I was talking uh, previously uh, on Wave of Destruction, how they were really capturing the essence of season 17. So when I first heard the Fourth Doctor Adventures volume uh, series 9 and the stories uh, involved there, I was curious to see whether they would capture the same essence from series 18 of the TV series. So I'll play a trailer for the first box set now and see if uh, see what you think. Uh, are you picking up any essence of the TV version of series or the TV series 18? Have a listen. Ah, oh, Scrayer, man, put him over there. Oh, it's already worth bothering with, Colonel. Barely alive. <clears throat> Another unsolicited drain on our resources. My name is Adric. Where is this? Welcome to Purgatory 12. From Big Finish Productions, Doctor Who, The Fourth Doctor Adventures, Series 9, Volume 1. Ow! They're shooting at us. What is that? Not a missile. It's more like a rust. Landing of catch imminent. Steady. Whoa. Immediate evasive action necessary. Too late. Hold tight. This 
is Adric. We shall soon find something unforgivable in him, for in the sight of Darklish, we are all unforgiven. A friend of mine, two friends, have gone missing. It's true. The gullets have gone. Hold on, my lady. I, I can't. Hang on. And I have to find them. Once the gullet gets you. What's happening? We picked up a distress signal. I'm sorry. Trace this signal and come to our aid. This is colony ship Tantalus. Why did you decide to land here? We didn't. Oh dear. The ship sustained critical damage. Leaving us with no choice but to make landfall on the nearest inhabitable planet. Ah. And we've been stuck here ever since. Ah. Although this planet is habitable on the night side, on the daylight side it is scorching hot. Thanks for the meal. You must understand. What was that? We're slowing down. I know that you have a ship that can get us off this planet because either we will all leave together in your ship or we will all die together. What is that? Oh. Doctor! Adric, get away from that thing. Oh. 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 Adric! Yes, Laker, what is it? Pilot, I'm at the main airlock. There's a dozen people down here wrecking the ship. What? Fly high into the sky! No! I think they're trying to force their way out. May I be of assistance? Doctor. Yes, Pilot Dina. Is the doctor there? Hello? Please proceed at once to the sick bay. What? One of my crew has been injured. Watch out! Ow! You're right. Stupid thing, fit me. You are a medical doctor, I take it. Of course. Well, let's just hope you can do more for them than you could do for the engines. The chase is over. It is time for the dawn. The forest is bursting into flames. We have to get out of here right now. You can't just go. I'm sorry, but we don't have time to save your ship. The TARDIS. Big finish. We love stories. Colonel, what's Adric done? Is he in the doghouse already? What I love about this particular series is that they've got the feel of season 18 just right. You may not have heard that completely in the trailer, but they have done a fantastic job. Now, I want to address these two stories. There's the, the two stories in the box set. The first one is called Purgatory 12. The second story is called Chase the Night. Now, Purgatory 12 is written by Mark Platt. And as I've discussed previously on the podcast, Mark Platt is known as an author who has some of the best loved and most well-known stories, both on TV with Ghostlight, season 26, and Spare Parts. Everyone says Spare Parts is one that you must listen to. Um, the Cyberman origin story. Well, that's Mark Platt. So he's well known for these classic, classic stories. But I found it funny that even in the extras on this one, because Nicholas Briggs is directing, um, he spoke about the trepidation he feels when he sees a script and Mark Platt's name is written on it because he knows that it's going to take a bit of work to wrap his head around some of the concepts. And he virtually spoke my mind. It is exactly how I feel when I see a CD or get a download with Mark Platt's name on it. I think, oh, it's Mark Platt. I'm going to be in for something that's going to be a bit mind twisting, a bit mind bending. It's going to be not understandable. It's going to be too hard to understand. If I get distracted for two seconds, I'm going to lose the whole plot. These are the kind of thoughts that go through my mind with a Mark Platt script. He does write stories that aren't like that, but a lot of his stories are like that. I'm going to read the blurb for Purgatory 12 just for my own benefit, so bear with me. Here's what it says on the back of the CD. Still searching for a way out of e-space, the TARDIS crew land on an isolated space rock and immediately find it drawn towards a nearby asteroid. 
The asteroid has air and gravity unequal to its size and is strewn with the wrecks of spaceships. Veins and pools of rust are everywhere. Stuck on the asteroid away from his friends, Adric discovers that it's a penal colony housing a gang of alien convicts, but resources are low and they're starting to starve. But escaping the prisoners is only the first part of the traveller's troubles because there's a sinister presence at the heart of the asteroid and it won't release them quite as easily. Now I read that for my benefit because it's been a little while since I've heard Purgatory 12 now and even with Ghostlight, I watch the story and I know what's going on and I can make sense of it while I'm watching it but it's so weird. Five minutes after I finish watching Ghostlight, I tend to forget what Ghostlight was all about. And when I think about it, I think, what was going on there? It's the same in this story, Purgatory 12. The story itself is absolutely fascinating science fiction story. It, it has utilized the fact that they're in e-space. So they're in not just an alien world, but they're in an alien universe. So Mark Platt has taken that. And he has created some sci-fi concepts that will that will bend the minds of the most ardent sci-fi fans. Um, and you've got to concentrate really hard on the imagery and the concepts that he's trying to get across. The story itself, it's really, really difficult to follow. So for me personally, and I can't say this for you, but for me... This was not the most enjoyable Mark Platt story I've ever heard. Um, you put this next to spare parts, it's chalk and cheese. All right, but it's still a great story. It's hard to explain. I still really enjoy it. And what Purgatory 12 does wonderfully is it does the characterizations beautifully. There are some awesome, awesome characters in there um, and some great dialogue that is just a pleasure to listen to. That is what's good about Purgatory 12. If you go into the story thinking about um, getting enjoyment out of the dialogue, you're going to enjoy it. If you go into Purgatory 12 trying to get the uh, best science fiction story you've ever heard or the most uh, exciting science fiction story you've ever heard, you, you may think that at the end of it, but if you're like me, you're going to be a little bit confused. Um, and it's just... That's just how Mark Platt is. It's just, he does stories like this from time to time. So, yeah, do it for the characterizations. To hear that TARDIS team together after so long, to hear uh, Matthew Waterhouse, Tom Baker, and Lala Ward together in that season 18 style, even some of the music. Jamie Robertson, who does the music, has put his own spin on it, but he has used the the themes and variations that season 18 had and it really takes you back there to season 18 so that's something to really really enjoy so out of the four stories that are in the two box sets for series 9 uh, purgatory 12 would probably be my least favorite because of the confusion i feel at the end of it um, i usually judge stories on how i feel at the end of them uh, rather than overly analyzing them about how wonderful they are and there is no denying that Mark Platt is a wonderful writer, but unfortunately this time I was feeling really confused at the end of the story. Um, I found myself not listening to the whole story again, but I'd listen to an episode. I might be distracted by something if I was working or doing something else with the headphones on, and I would have to go back to the start of the episode because I, I didn't know what the heck was going on. But I loved the characterizations. I loved the character development. So listen to it for that. You will not be disappointed for that. If we move on to the second story in this box, uh, Chase the Night by Jonathan Morris. Now, I always, when I, uh, Jonathan Morris is one of those authors, when I see his name, I think, yes, I'm in for a treat here because I, I'm always satisfied by Jonathan Morris's stories. Um, he always does a good job. They're always interesting. And this one too has capitalized on the fact that they're in an alien universe um, so it is a concept that you could put into a story set in our universe but i think it works really well in the e-space universe 
and I love the sound design here the the sounds of the alien world Jamie Robertson really takes you there and uh, fascinating story about a, um, a planet that's too hot to live on on one side so you've always got to keep in front of the sun so this crashed spaceship and its crew have come up with these train tracks to take them around the planet as the the hot part catches up with them so therefore that's where the name comes from chase the night it's a really really cool story and there's an event that happens in there that is very similar to an event that's going to happen in season 19 with peter davison and you get a reaction to that particular how can i say this without spoiling it should i spoil it do i get you to block your ears if you don't want to hear what happens no, I'm not going to spoil it. But there is something pretty heavy that happens in Chase the Night that you get um, Tom Baker's reaction to it. He was always, in season 18, he always seemed quite aloof with Adric and quite annoyed with Adric. So here in Chase the Night, it's kind of the first time we really see Tom Baker as the fourth Doctor and um, really um, having some feeling for, for Adric as uh, as a fellow being uh, which is something you didn't see much on the tv series he was more of much more of a nuisance to the fourth doctor and i like that particular aspect of the relationship between adric and the fourth doctor in chase the night as far as the story goes great story love it so uh, i can i can highly recommend the box set for that story as well as the characterization and the wonderful things about it I'm not going to talk about the second box set, uh, Volume 2 of Series 9 of the Fourth Doctor Adventures. I might uh, talk about them on a future podcast. But uh, I hope you've enjoyed this little dip we've had into some of the to- the Tom Baker era because it's not a Doctor that, I, that I've uh, dealt with too much on the podcast, if at all. And we're 10 episodes into the podcast and I haven't talked about Tom Baker at all, which is most people's ultimate Doctor. So I'm glad I got to do that tonight with uh, with a few different examples of a few different eras that Big Finish has done, and they've done an absolutely fantastic job. So don't forget Shadow of the Sun, um, the lockdown episode, uh, or the episode that was created in lockdown with all the actors all over the place in isolation, is being released in just a few days' time. If you're hearing this podcast after the 12th of May, 2020. Um, it has already been released, so you'll be able to hear that. Oh, I was also very happy to hear that um, Return of the Cybermen, which was originally slated to be released in November 2021, is now going to be released in January 2021. So, or is it November this year? Well, I could have that wrong. But anyway, it was brought back almost a year. So I'm, I'm happy to be able to hear that because uh, the, the Return, of, Return of the Cybermen was uh, an, an episode that I was really, really excited by the video trailer. If you haven't seen that video trailer for Return of the Cybermen by Big Finish, do yourself a favor, jump onto YouTube or the Big Finish website and look around and find that. I'll, I'll put a link to it in the show notes. How's that sound? The video trailer for Return of the Cybermen really whets your appetite. It's great stuff. So uh, thanks for listening. That's all we've got time for today. And uh, look forward to uh, giving you some more gems. We're going to be, uh, over the next few episodes, we're going to be looking at some some lesser favorite episodes. Um, we might be looking at some of the spin-offs as well, and hopefully have a few guests coming on too. So uh, you'll be able to hear some other voices uh, besides mine. So that could be a quite a relief for you. So until then, remember to listen to audio drama because... Audio drama rocks. Rocks. Rocks.